I'm now found of every blessing Tune my heart to sing thy praise Streams of mercy never ceasing Call for songs of the loudest praise Teach me some Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come out once again to your house. It's been so good to come out to your house every Lord's Day, Lord, and it sure is a blessing. Uh, always be with us to sing songs and listen to your word taught and preached, uh, Lord. You know every name on this list today, Lord, every single one of them. You know what each person needs. Whatever that is, Lord, heal these people. Give them uh, good health, Lord. Be with the remainder of this service. Be with the preacher. Be with the special singing. And we'll never fail to give you the praise for it all. For we ask this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Larry Strange in the Lighthouse. Thank you, Larry. Appreciate it. Thank you for the music program of our church here. We ask God to bless it. A man, a man commented on it this week. I love the music of the church out there. What, I said, do you like the preaching too? Well, I like the music. <laughs> okay. God's plan for the ages. Oh, my. God has a plan for you and for me, and we're part of his great big plan. I've been led to the Ephesians book, the, the book of the Ephesians, chapter 1, verse number 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, not by the will of man. He was not appointed by man. He was appointed by God for a special mission to the saints, to all the saints, the set-apart one, the saints who are at Ephesus, who are the faithful ones, those who believe in Jesus Christ and are walking that way and living that way. Doesn't matter what the geographical position of you, where you live or whatever, it just matters your position in Christ. That is the part that counts. Whether you live on the hill or in the valley or wherever, doesn't matter about that. But the real position, as far as God is concerned, is being in Christ. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away and all things are become new. We have been installed as Christians. We have been installed into an extremely vital union with the Son of God. I can't say it enough. We have been placed into it by the process of adoption or grafting like a branch into a tree, grafted into the precious Son of God. The King of the universe wants to be your friend and wants you to be in Him. And so much so that we are closely identified with Him. He goes on to say in verses two, verses, uh, verse number two, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus the Christ. Notice the order. Grace always comes before our peace. It's God's grace that gives us peace. Because of God's grace, we can have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. It's only by His grace that we are even adopted into the family of God. You think it's something you did or I did? No, no, it's God's grace. He did it because He loved you and that's part of His plan is to come let Jesus die on the cross so you could be part of the family of God. Peace is absolutely unattainable outside of God's marvelous grace. You don't believe it? Just look at the definition in the book of the Revelation when the church is taken out. Everything good goes out of the world. Everything that, that talks about Jesus Christ goes out. A lot of people in that day who were left behind will be praying out to God and calling God's name. But oh no. When the church takes out, it's absolute chaos. You can't have peace outside of God's marvelous grace. It comes from the God our Father through the Lord Jesus Christ, and they are identified with each other so very closely that that identifies us. He is the Father of the Lord Jesus the Christ. We are blessed in the heavenlies. Look at verse 3. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed us with each spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now the word heavenly places or places is in italics, which means it is applied by the, the, the translators to make it read better, and it probably does, except we are in the heavenlies. I'm not in the heavenly place right now, literally, physically, but I am in the heavenlies. And so are you in the heavenlies if you know the Lord Jesus Christ. No need to seek any other blessing from God. You've got everything you need. We've got it all right here in the Word of God. I saw, I, I saw you are, you're not going to believe this, but it's on the Internet, so it's got to be true, right? There is now a Christian Ouija board, which reports instead of that thing you move around, you, you all know what that thing, I don't know what they call that thing, it's a cross, and you move it around and the Holy Spirit speaks to you through the Ouija board. Well, the Holy Spirit speaks to you through the Bible. You got all you need right here. You don't need anything else. You don't need this other junk, which is just junk and serious foolishness and serious occult junk, I might add. Now, we are called to bless the Lord who has already blessed us. God has... God has blessed us with spiritual blessings. I sit there, I, I, know, I, I, I know I talk about this a lot. I just cannot believe what God is doing. 
here in this world, in this, in this awful, awful, awful world in which we live. My, what an exciting time. A person told me, he said, boy, this is a terrible time to live. I said, no, it's an exciting time. Man, look at the opportunities. Look at the privileges that we have to live in front of the Lord Jesus Christ. He has done for us, and we bless him, but when we praise him, he is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and he blesses us in the heavenlies. Look at verse 4. He has chosen us. Middle voice. He has chosen us for himself. He has chosen us for himself. He's chosen us to be in his group. I grew up on 5th Street in Eastport, just across Lincoln from the Frog Pond. And we played ball. We played all kinds of ball. We, if it had a ball in it, we played it. Big ball, little ball, volleyball. We didn't play soccer. I didn't know what soccer was, but we did play football and baseball and softball and all kinds of different things like that. And we, we chose people, you know. And there were two little guys in our group. One was Benji Long and one was little Stevie Spurrier. And they were little guys in our group and they were always chosen last. And us big guys, we got chosen. You know how you went up the bat, you know, and you got up to the top, you get the top, you got to choose first. Everybody chose, you know, the big ones and went on down. Little Stevie running around here, little Benji running, get me, get me, get me, get me. And finally somebody would, I'll take Benji, or I'll take Stevie, whatever, you know. He was on a team. He's on a team. We are on a team. We have been chosen by God chosen by Him so that we might live for Him in Him before the foundation of the world. Why? So that we would be holy and blameless before Him. Oh, listen, blameless before Him. He has chosen us. I thank the Lord for that. can't get over that. How? The son of Fred and Joe Moody, the youngest son, the baby boy of Fred and Joe Moody, chosen by God to be on his team, praise the Lord, chosen by God for God before the foundations of the world were ever laid. We were chosen by him in eternity past to work in eternity present for the eternal future. Chosen by him so that we would strive to be holy and blameless before him and before all the world. Amen. Then the two words, in love, brought down to the next verse, please. In love, he predestined us to adoption as sons. He knew us before we were ever born, conceived, before we were ever thought of, before it, mom and dad were ever, anybody, all the way back to the foundations of the world. He knew us. He knew us. And he predestined us. We, he knew we would. We still had the will to choose it or not choose it. We still had the opportunity to say yes or no. And I say this as humbly as I know how. You can say yes or no to the God of this universe. Don't know why you'd ever say no. Don't know why anybody in their right mind would ever say, no, nah, I don't want that. And I'll take my chances on here on the other side. There are no chances on the other side. There's no chances at all. It's, 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 it, listen, you're a loser right down the line unless you choose Jesus Christ. Our adoption as sons is meant to wait. The word adoption as sons is an adoption as an adult son. As an adult son in the family in which Jesus Christ is the firstborn according to his good pleasure and not in any way because of anything we've ever done or ever considered doing. The cause for his choosing us is not found in us in any way. Ah, but you're a preacher, so what's your point? Well, surely if anybody's going to make heaven, you are. Oh, really? You've got to be in Christ. Anybody in Christ is going to make heaven. Anybody in Christ is going to heaven. Don't matter who you are, where you are, what you are. Anybody in Christ. The Bible says in Titus chapter 3, it is not by works. Now let's see here. What have I done? What have you done? Let's just take, a, take John over here. And this man over here has sung beautifully. See him standing right there? He sings beautifully. He can sing and the congregation will just rejoice. Is that going to get him to heaven? When he gets there, he can sing in the choir. But he's got to get there, and he get there only through the blood of Jesus Christ. Well, now, here's, a, here's an evangelist who preaches to millions of people. Is that going to get him to heaven? Not that. The fact that he's doing that because he's saved, yes, and he'll take others with him. Thank, thank the Lord for that. Well, here's a person who has studied the Bible, and he translates the Bible. 
He, he knows the languages. He knows the Hebrew, the Greek, the Aramaic. He knows it all. He can look at every little verse in all the languages and stuff, and he can just influence the people or she, whatever. Is that going to get him to heaven, get her to heaven? No, no. No, not by works. Even, now look what it says. It is not by works of righteousness. Ooh, you mean, I, you mean if I do good stuff, it doesn't count? It counts when you get there, but it doesn't get you there. Amen. You see what I'm saying? It counts when you get there. You want to build up a following. You want to build up a series of good works to be rewarded in heaven, but you've got to get to heaven to start with, and that is only through the blood of Jesus Christ. I tell everybody, when people, when carpet salesmen come in here, they came in here with a carload of carpet samples. This wasn't built. We were trying to decide what this to do. So they had carpet samples everywhere. And we were looking at all the carpet samples looking at all the colors. And I said, there's no way, there's no way that we're ever gonna agree on this. So the church voted to go with either blue, green, or red. I voted for red. I got down, down voted, I voted down. Uh, and they went with, uh, what color did they go with? Blue, oh yeah. You had a clue somehow or another, didn't you? Okay, they went with blue. Now then, what shade of blue? <laughs> Did you know there is no such thing as blue anymore? It's midnight, royal, whatever, whatever. All different kinds of blue this and blue that, whatever. And so you had to choose a, a shade of blue. And I said, upon a committee, a color committee. So the ladies, I think one guy ended up on it because he wasn't there that day. He got put on that committee to choose that color. And they chose actually this color right here which is what the carpet used to be. We've kind of changed it on them. Those committee members are still out there somewhere or another. So we've kind of changed it just a little bit there. But, but you know what? When you go to Jesus Christ, you have one choice. Me or anybody else. Choose me or you don't make your choice. When you came to Jesus Christ, you don't have to pick all the different shades of Jesus Christ. There's only one shade. It's only Him. It's Him. You choose Him. His blood is red, and you choose Him. Amen. And He will take you to heaven. To the praise of the glory of His grace, in which He made us to be accepted in the Beloved One. Oh, my dear friends, when Jesus Christ looks at you, he sees His Son. We are accepted in the Beloved. We are accepted in the Beloved. We are accepted in the Beloved. Thank God. Thank God for that. The church creed of the past. This is the Westminster Shorter Catechism. There's a statement in it that says, What is the chief end of man? The chief end of man. The chief end of man is to glorify God and enjoy Him forever. Amen. Forever. Amen. Eternity is a long, long time, folks. Eternity is a long time if you're wrong or if you're right. Schaefer says it this way. Schaefer, God's grace is undeserved, unearned, and uncompensated. We are given to men to deserve only His wrath, but He gives us to be accepted in the Beloved One. Accepted in Christ. Then He goes on to say in verse number 7, And we have, present tense, we have redemption in Him through His blood. We have, right now, present tense, redemption in Him through His blood. And we also have present tense, the forgiveness of our sins. How much? According, According to the riches of His grace. Amen. Praise the Lord. How, how much is that? How, how, how big a bank account is that? Man, that's how, that's how much we have been forgiven. Oh, listen. 
Let me tell you something. This thing just grows and grows and grows. The Bible says we are so saved. As my preacher used to say, I'm so saved it's pitiful. <laughs> the simple <laughs> truth is, think about it, folks. The, the idea that Jesus forgives our sins because he is God and only he can do so. Even the Pharisees recognize that. You remember when, when Jesus, the man was healed, the man coming down through the roof was healed, and he also said, and your sins are forgiven you? And the Pharisees stood back and said, nobody can forgive sins but God. Oh, really? They knew it. They knew it. The Pharisees who studied the Bible, they knew that God could forgive sin. So I've got a Savior who is God's Son, and He is co-equal with God, and if you're in Him, you're co-equal with Him. Him, Amen. not as God, but as His Son. You're co-equal to Him. Praise the Lord. This thing, Jesus forgives our sins, and He can do that. He can do that. In the verse number 8, He lavishes and abounds on us in all wisdom and insight. He has made known to us wisdom, wisdom, the mystery of His will. You say, I don't know what God wants me to do. Well, God wants you to know. God's not going to hide His will from you. He wants you to know. So, you know what? I didn't learn uh, a lot about solid geometry and trigonometry until I went to class. Until I got in the class. And to be honest with you, I didn't learn much about it then. It hadn't been for Polly Scruggs, I'd never, <laughs> I'd never made it, John, to be honest with you. If it hadn't been for her pulling me through the class, I'd never, been made it, never made it. The simple truth is, I wouldn't have known it had I not gone to class. So the simple truth is he has made known to us the mystery. When you come to him, he teaches you things. He, te he teaches you all kinds of things. And he gives to people the idea to preach the word of God and so forth. I said on the radio broadcast this morning, uh, the, 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 the radio broadcast, when you hand out this bulletin, you are, this sermon booklet, you are preaching the word of God. Amen. You're preaching the word of God. Well, you've never been called to preach, but you have been called to hand out those little booklets. I give you one every Sunday when you come in. We offer them to you. Donnie, uh, Ronnie takes 35 around. We mail out 25. And then there are people that we just pass them out everywhere. I've got to go to big boys right after church because they're almost out up there. And fill it back up again. It's amazing. It's amazing. And you can be a preacher of the Word of God by just saying, would you read this? Just check this out. Look at the pictures on this thing and read this. I found this most interesting. The Bible says he has made known to us wisdom, the mystery of of his will according to his kind intention which he purposed in God with a view with a view to an administration suitable to the times in which you live so you say God is God had been caught off guard by this world oh no no God knows what this world is I've been saying for years that it's going to get worse I have. I've been saying that for years. I've been preaching for 55 years, and I've been saying for most of those 55 years, it's going to get worse. To be honest with you, if I can be honest with you, finally after 55 years, I did not know how it could get any worse than it was 55 years ago. But it has, and it can. I could not imagine anybody making a Christian Ouija board. I could not imagine. I used to say, if I owned the drive-in movie out the highway out there and they're showing those X-rated movies, I would at least turn the screen around backwards so people couldn't see it from the street. I've said that. But that was the purpose of building it that way so you could see it from the street. I could, I could not imagine how it would get any worse than it was then. But it is. And it didn't catch God off guard. He says he will do it according to the fullness of the times. He will do it in according to the world in which you live. A man told me yesterday, I kind of backed off from the church. I said, really? Tell me why. He said, well, I didn't like the way things were going. I said, really? Well, what, what was it? What was Well, you know, I said, no, tell me, what was it? Well, I, I just kind of backed off from the church. I said, did you know that there was no church more corrupt than the one that Jesus had when he was here? He, was the, he, he turned over the money changers because of what they were doing. He did those things because of what they were doing in what we would know as the church of that day. 
He says, I'm doing this in accordance to the times, things in the heavens and things on the earth, so that you might know in Him you are loved in Him. God has a plan for you. He says in verse 11, we have obtained, we have obtained, we've been made a heritage. We have obtained having been predestined according to the purpose who works all things after the counsel, underlined, of His will, underlined. God knew everything. God knows everything. He makes the choice, and we are responsible to enact His will. God is King. We are, we are chosen to follow Him. He is our sovereign. I can't explain that. I'm on page three of a 36-page sermon here, so we're going to stop with this. But let me tell you something. This, the truth is, He is sovereign. He is the God of this universe. And He wants to be your friend. Can't get over that. I get letters from politicians all the time. I get emails from Donald Trump. I get emails from this one and that one and the other one. I get all kinds of, I get all kinds of stuff all the time. I hit the delete button. My, my delete button is almost worn out from all this stuff. But you know what? I am a personal friend with God. And so are you. Whew, let that soak in. You are somebody. You are a child of God if you're saved. And you are brothers with Jesus Christ and joint heirs with Him. Joint heirs with Him. Now Lisa's one of my three heirs. Ed and, and Jolene and, and Lisa. And it, it's not going to be worth an awful lot, honey, I'm sorry. But one third of a little is littler. But you know what? When you're a joint heir, you share equally, equally. How would you like to be an heir of the God of the universe and, and share equally with his firstborn son because you're adopted into the family of God? That's the only reason. It's not because of anything that's done. It's not because of good looks or good singing or good preaching or good this or good anything. It's all because of the blood of Jesus the Christ. And His plan is to bring you into His family and let you enjoy Him. Enjoy Him for the rest of eternity. Uh, I told him yesterday at the Quilts of Valor, I said, as long as I'm pastor here, you're welcome in this church as far as Quilts of Valor, giving the quilts out to the military. As long as I'm pastor here, well, how long are you going to stay? I said, I'm going to stay till Jesus comes, I hope. I hope I'm going to stay till Jesus comes. I hope I'm here. I hope I, I love to be raptured from this building right here. If that be God's will, fine with me. Either way, it's fine with me. But I have no other plans but to be taken from this particular place Right here, if death comes my way again, that's fine too, my soul, that's all right. Uh, but, but I'd rather stay and be raptured out <laughs> because of who I am, no. Because of what I am, no. Because of where I come from, no. Because of anything, no. Because of Jesus, that's all. Do you know him? He has a plan for your life. Do you know Him? Are you in that plan? I beg you to consider your situation right now. If you don't know Him outside of our church, do you know Him in the free pardon of sin? I heard my mom say it over and over and over again at her Sunday school class down at Bobby. I would go over to Dad's class. I could hear him teaching too. He'd say it over and over and over again to the men's class down at Bobby. When they asked me to teach the young people at Bobby, I'd say it over and over and over again. Do you know Him? The Bible says, I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. I was in the hospital one time and a preacher came to visit with me. My wife was sitting right there. And he says, you know what the Bible says? And I said, well, you, you, you share with me. I know in whom I have believed. He said it that way. Did you catch it? Anybody catch it? My wife did. When he left, he said, she said, did you hear what he said? I know in whom I have believed. 
The Bible says, I know whom I have believed. I know him. I know him. Do you? How can I, Tom? I'm just, no, you are a person for whom Jesus died. Outside of our church, you are a soul for whom Jesus died. Shed his blood and died for you, just for you. Everybody can accept him as personal Savior and Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, we bring now the people before you. Ask you, dear Lord, to bring this message to our hearts. Bore it into our hearts, Lord, as you've borne it into mine over and over and over again. Father, I pray in Jesus' name you'll speak to that person right now out there or in here that's making that decision one way or the other. I've got to get this thing straight in my heart right now. Father, I pray for that person. Make it clear to him or her, a young person in our children's church or anybody around in this building or outside, those that are working in the control room, everybody outside of our church as well, bore it into their hearts, dear Lord. I make this decision. I make this choice. I need to make it now. For now is the accepted time. I don't know when you're coming, Lord. I really don't. I don't know when Jesus is coming. But I do know this. I want people to be ready when they do. I want people to be ready when you come. I thank you, Father, for letting me come into the family of God, calling me into the ministry of preaching. And for whatever it's worth, dear Lord, we're going to keep right on doing it until the day we die, if that be your will. Help us, dear Lord, in all that we do. As eyes are closed and heads are bowed, here in the building and outside as well, do you know whom you have believed? It's fine to know in whom, it's fine to know of whom, it's fine to know all those other prepositions, but do you know whom you have believed? And you are persuaded that he is able to keep that which you've committed unto him against that day. Heavenly Father, speak to that one right now who's praying that prayer. Lord, I want to know how my sins can be forgiven. I want to know that my sins are gone. I, I believe in you as my personal Savior. I trust you as my personal Savior. I believe that I put my sins on you and you take them away and you wash me clean, whiter than snow. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for that person, whomever he or she may be right now making that choice to fall into your plan for the ages. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. If you're here today and God is speaking to your heart, make that choice. Make the choice, I beg you. If I could walk this aisle for you, I would. I wish I could, but I can't. If I could come kneel at this altar, I wish I could, but I can't. If I could make the decision for you, I would. I wish I could, but I can't. It's your choice because he chose that. He chose to send Jesus Christ to die on a cross so that we might make that choice to serve him or not. Thank you, Lord, for those that have made that choice. Don't let them, don't let them leave, dear Lord, without finding for sure about this thing. Be with us now, Lord, and bless this church and thank you for it. Your plan for the ages included me. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, dear Lord. Your plan included me and everybody else that's in this human race. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. May God bless you folks. Thank you so very much. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. For now, indeed, I find thy power in thy. Heart of stone.